position. Tiller as the runner-up. There we go again. Jasper de Buist in first place. Yeah, they're not going to throw bottles at the moment. And another sprint effort for Mathieu van der Poel. Destiny. Now it's up to Jonas Rikard with uh, Philips is still in third place. They still have one rider left. Final lead out rider there for Opsi the Koenig. 150 meters to go. Caleb Yunis trying to get out of that wheel of Jasper Philips. Philips is launching a sprint now. Ewan is not going to sprint. We have Jasper Philips and we have Jakobsen as well. A real battle to the line, but the win is for Opsi the Koenig. Jasper Philips wins the sprint. What a day for that team. Test Fabio Jakobsen. We have Alexander Christoph there. Mathieu van der Poel is a little bit further back. He tries to get onto the wheel of Fabio Jakobsen, but van der Poel is way, way back. Emil Lippins is there. Jasper de Buist is there. But the final 150 meters, and there is the launch pad for Fabio Jakobsen. Is anybody able to pass Jakobsen? Mathieu van der Poel is really going for it. Mathieu van der Poel on the inside, but no, it's Jakobsen winning the stage. A good solid ride by Jasper Diverse coming up, but uh, not going to threaten the man in the hot seat and all the, the next couple after him. But Matthew van der Poel, that is where all eyes are on. And Søren Wadenskjöld, he'll be sitting in that hot seat and watching this footage as well of the Dutchman, hoping he can just hold him off. what he needs <laughs> yep. and of course uh, the competition in the Tour de France is going to be world-class so he's just going to challenge himself a little bit more with 36 kilometers out from the finish line about him it's just um mr diamond's um fantastic cycling just like that entire whether that's Vingegaard, whether that is pogaccia whether it's Wout van Aert, uh, the sprinters that we have the classics guys that we have the really young riders that we have uh truly in a, in a wonderful age at the moment and and these riders they they make racing so fun to watch and we're happy we're all happy for that
so impressive is it's been different riders chasing him at different times throughout this effort. He took off with just over 36 kilometres left to race. It was uh, the two riders, uh, Nas and Schoins from Trexeca Freda doing most of the chasing. A little bit of help from Abrahamson from Uno X originally. But then the attack started after that. So fresh her riders jumping out of that chase group to try and get across the Matthew van der Poel. But he's fended every acceleration off. A long attack after Johnny Vermeer has completely emptied the tank at the front uh, of the peloton on the climb of the Côte de la Petite Somme. And then Mathieu van der Poel almost casually attacked off the front, glancing over his shoulder, saw that nobody was even able to follow. His maximum lead was 44 seconds. At a certain point, it went down to 15. They could almost touch him, but then the chasing, the organization in the chase was completely gone, and the gap went out again. Mathieu van der Poel on his way to the win here in Mur de Durbuy. There it is, Mathieu van der Poel, victorious in Durbuy. 41.4 kilometers an hour average. Trying to get Jasper Phillips into the front. Uh, Ricard is looking for the leader. He's not going to contribute anymore. The final man is going to be uh, Mathieu van der Poel. Also moving to the front are the riders of Trek Sigafredo. This is that final turn, and it's a really a bit of a tight squeeze there. Into the finish cameras, and Mathieu van der Poel launches the sprint himself. Jasper Phillips seems to be lost a little bit. He has to find the gap and get past uh, Jakobsen there. Jakobsen through the sprint. Can Phillips and still mate meet him? No, it's going to be Fabio Jakobsen. Number two for him in this Baloise of Belgium tour. Looks like a rear puncture for Van der Poel. Mathieu Van der Poel with 20 kilometers to go with the rear wheel puncture. He takes service from the Shimano neutral service motorbike.